Hey, do you want to add some plants to your aquarium? But the question is, you are not sure what plants to add and how to grow them. Planted aquariums are very popular nowadays because of their natural beauty and amazing ability to consume the toxic nitrogen compounds produced by fish waste. However, starting up a planted tank for the first time can be challenging for a beginner. You see all these beautiful photos of incredible aquascapes and videos of others using high-end carbon dioxide systems. Creating a stunning planted tank may take lots of money and expertise. And you want to know what plants are best and how to grow these plants wisely in your aquarium. So today's video will discuss the best beginner aquarium plants that anybody may attempt and grow successfully in their fish tank. As a quick note before we get started, this video will provide you with all the necessary stats that you should know before buying or growing these plants in your aquariums. So make sure to watch the entire section of each plant so that you don't miss any important information. You can also use timestamps to better understand a particular plant if you missed any important information. And if you like our efforts and want Aquarium Store Depot to generate such topics and ideas for you, please subscribe to our channel. We promise to you deliver the best quality video on aquariums and fish to help beginners advance fish keepers in such sorts of queries. So without further ado, here is a list of the best beginner aquarium plants that require only a basic understanding to grow them. In our first position, let's learn about java fern. Java fern is the staple plant for any low-tech planted tank. Java fern is a very hardy plant that grows quickly without expensive aquarium equipment. They do just fine in low-light environments without any added carbon dioxide. It has the added benefit of not being liked by most fish. This means java fern can be used in aquariums with fish that eat aquarium plants. It can be attached to rocks or driftwood. There are no substrate requirements for java fern, giving you freedom on how you create your aquascape. So java fern is the best option to grow in your fish tank if you are a beginner in a fish hobby. After java fern, let's learn about anubias bartery. Anubias are easy to care for as mid-ground plants. It will grow in any condition and is very attractive when fully mature. It is a very forgivable plant, and since it is column feeding, it can be placed anywhere. Many fish keepers attach this plant to driftwood or aquarium rocks since the rhizomes are best left in the open to prevent rot. It has the added benefit of many fish not liking its taste. Like java fern, anubias does not require a specialized substrate and will happily grow even in bare bottom tanks. Anubias bartery is one of the highest quality plants on market. The bartery variant is also known as the board leaf. Board leave is a tissue culture plant that grows in vitro in laboratories specializing in propagating aquatic plants. This method of growing plants ensures the plant is free from any pets. I would recommend adding the Anubias plant to your aquarium because of its attractiveness. After Anubias, let's learn about Marimo moss balls, which is in the third position on our list. The Marimo moss balls are actually algae and not an actual plant. These moss balls are easy to care for, prefer low light, and are generally left alone by most fish. However, some fish may become curious and try to eat these balls. The Marimo moss ball is known to many as the world's most accessible aquarium plant in the industry. It is bulletproof and requires very little care. Its cute round shape makes them perfect for small betta fish and freshwater shrimp tanks. In mass quantities, they are known for reducing nutrient levels. They are sold at such low prices that most people purchase them in bulk and drop them into their tanks. They are native to colder waters, making them good candidates for cold water tanks. So if you want to add round-shaped plants to your tank, then Marimo moss balls are the best option for your aquarium. After Marimo moss balls, now let's learn about Vallisneria. If you want an easy-to-care plant for your aquarium background, then Vallisneria is the one plant that can fit these requirements. It is super easy to care for and not demanding. It gets very tall if left to grow and will quickly turn a background into a jungle-like backdrop. It supplies a lot of shelter for your fish and looks amazing as its long green leaves wave through your tank's current. It is a centerpiece plant that can thrive in a low-tech setup. Vallisneria is an excellent option to buy. They are reasonably priced, grow fast, and get tall. 
these features make this plant the best option to add value to your aquarium. After Vallisneria, let's learn about Java Moss, one of the most popular plants in the hobby. Java Moss is an exciting aquarium plant that doesn't have roots. Instead, this plant has sticky ends called rhizoids that they use to stick to just about any surface. For this reason, Java Moss is very versatile and can be used anywhere in a fish tank. However, it is most often used as a carpeting plant. Like Java Fern and Anubias, Java Moss doesn't require any special equipment. They do perfectly fine in a tank with low lighting. More light will make the strands more compact, however. Fish will mess with this plant, but generally, it can outgrow the damage. Some fish keepers say goldfish avoid it, but this isn't true. Java Moss recovers very quickly, so fish keepers might not notice any damage to the moss. Java Moss is an ideal plant for low-tech tanks as it will thrive without fertilizers or carbon dioxide. One of the best options for beginner fish keepers because there is no need to give extra attention to Java Moss. After Java Moss, now let's learn about Amazon Sword. If you want a tall, rooted, easy-to-care plant, the Amazon Sword is one of the best plants to buy. It is one of the classic aquarium plants in our hobby that can grow very large over your fish tank with its giant green leaves. As it grows and matures, it will require feedings through root tabs or liquid fertilizers. An active substrate will also keep it fed in the beginning. It requires the most light of all the plants on this list, though that isn't saying much since all of these plants can grow in a low-light, low-tech environment. I've only found one supplier of tissue, cultivated Amazon Sword online, and you may purchase this plant from the link in the description of this video. The plants arrive in good condition. Tissue culture plants are pest-free, have no hitchhikers, such as snails, and are simple to add to your aquarium. After Amazon Sword, let's learn about Monte Carlo. If you are looking to do an aquascape style that requires a carpeting plant and want something easy to grow, Monte Carlo is the plant to buy. It grows fast and once established is an easy grower. It requires medium light, which means you will want a proper planted aquarium LED since the light will need to penetrate the bottom of the tank. Its small leaves will offer an excellent contrast to other plants in your aquarium and give you that grass-like carpet that makes aquascapes look amazing. Monte Carlo is grown as tissue culture plants. These are lab-grown plants that are provided with clean environments. This means that you will receive a pest and disease-free plant. It also means this plant is easy to divide when you first plant them, which will help you save money. Monte Carlo is not an actual low-tech plant. If you are looking to do a mass carpet, it is recommended that you consider a carbon dioxide injection system. Make sure to keep this in mind when you are buying this plant. After Monte Carlo, now let's learn about Cryptocorine Ludia. Cryptocorine Ludia is an excellent midground, easy to care aquarium plant. It is slow growing, so it will not require much pruning and will save you on maintenance when it hits maturity. It is a very hardy plant and will grow in low light conditions. It is also one of the few plants on this list that can tolerate lower pH values. Cryptocorine plants will sometimes lose their leaves after being planted and regrow them afterward. This is done by the plant to absorb nutrients and grow new leaves appropriate for being submerged in water. It is an excellent mid-ground plant with only one drawback, and the drawback is that it requires fertilizer to thrive. After Cryptocorine, let's learn about Micro Amazon Swords, also known as a fast-growing mid-ground plant. Mid-ground plants that are fast-growing and easy to grow are hard to find on this list. Micro Swords are the best candidate for this list. They are usually labeled as foreground plants, but they can be used as mid-ground plants in shorter tanks, given their size. It will grow well without carbon dioxide and does fine in a low-light tank. Micro Swords are available in either pots or tissue culture. Both options are quickly split up and spread around your tank as the plant grows. Its splitting ability can give you more plants to start with since the plant reproduces with runners. As with all rooted plants on this list, make sure to fertilize them at a minimum to keep them healthy. Now let's move to our last plant on this list, which is Christmas Moss. Christmas Moss is an excellent aquarium plant for freshwater shrimp tanks. They are fluffy, which makes them excellent for baby shrimp, and it's really easy to attach them to rocks or driftwood. 
They grow very fast and will get tall if you do not prune them. Christmas moss comes in a mesh pad or dish, ready to plant or attach to driftwood or rocks. As with all root-feeding aquarium plants on this list, it will require fertilizing feeding to thrive. It also gets a bit dirty with detritus, and a mono shrimp will help with cleanup. It is an extremely hardy plant that will survive a wide range of aquarium parameters. This moss has been used in award-winning aquascapes and is easy to groom. It's easy to shape it to take over the spots you intend for it to grow over. So these features make Christmas moss the best plant for your aquarium. And if you want to know more about these plants, you can visit our official blog, where you will find all the essential details you need to know about these plants. If you like this video, please subscribe to the Aquarium Store Depot channel, where we will help you to solve questions related to fish and aquariums. Our objective is to make the aquarium hobby more accessible to beginners so that they can thrive. Thanks for watching this video. And if you want to add fish to your 5 gallon tank, watch the right video. And if you have a 10 gallon fish tank and want to know what fish are best for a 10 gallon fish tank, then watch the video on the left of your screen.